is, is especially common for women. Um, and so noticing like, am I doing this? What is my motivation underneath this? You know, am I hustling right now? Am I pleasing and appeasing, or am I really standing in my power of not shrinking? Am I staying firm in who I am, my sacred size? You know, I rem I know um, one of the things when I first started doing this work is I had a mantra: is just be yourself, be yourself, be yourself. And it's like if it doesn't work, then it's okay. Just, just be yourself. And so you know, just kind of going back to like you know, just show up as you, just show up as. Um, you know, who you are. And if it's a little messy, that's okay. But I just, I guess those are the three that we know from the research that um, tend to be the go-to home basis for people. And we usually tend to people please and appease people who have more power or that we're trying to impress. Um, and then, you know, come out swinging with the people that we love the most. Namaste, beautiful souls. I'm Shilpa, and you're tuned into the Omni Mindfulness Podcast, a sanctuary for spiritual entrepreneurs. As a holistic mindfulness coach and social marketing strategist, I'm here to guide you on a transformative journey. On this show, we explore captivating stories and provide practical tools that deepen your connection with your authentic self. Through the personal and professional narratives of remarkable individuals, we expand our consciousness and ignite the spark of possibility. Each season, I curate content that empowers you to create a holistic lifestyle encompassing spirituality, mindfulness, energy awareness, and mindset. Join me as we engage in conversations with experts in their respective fields and share solo casts from yours truly, all aimed at supporting you and relaxing, revitalizing, resetting your body, mind, and spirit. I'm your host and the visionary behind Omni Mindfulness. So what if just one story had the power to shift the trajectory of your life? What if you could become an instrument in helping others realize their true selves? And what if your soul's higher purpose lies in experiencing the joy of Omni Mindfulness? Remember, it's never too late to rewrite your story. Welcome to Season 7 as we embark on an, an exhilarating journey into energy awareness. In July, we explore the driving forces that fuel the lives of my guests, uncovering their passion and purpose. In August, we delve into the profound connection between somatic movement and vitality. And finally, in September, we explore holistic awareness where mind, body, and spirit unite for transformative experiences. Stay tuned for insightful conversations, expert guests, and tools to cultivate conscious energy awareness. So let's dive into the season of energy awareness together. It is my honor to introduce you to the next guest, Molly Colin Peterson. Molly is the co-founder and partner of The Daring Venture and founder of Imagine Coaching. Molly loves working with executives, professionals, and leaders who might be experiencing success on the outside, but may be feeling something is missing on the inside. She helps them realize their true potential and find more meaning at work. By discovering their natural talents and dreaming bigger, stepping into courage, they achieve new levels of engagement, excellence, and feel life-changing freedom and aliveness. She combines 25 years of experience as an executive career coach with thoughtfully designed programs that forward the action and address the internal fears and beliefs that get in the way. Molly is a PCC level ICF certified coach. She holds a master's degree in human development and is a certified Dare to Lead facilitator. Her mission is to help clients realize their true potential and live and work with purpose, courage, and heart. And now, here is Molly. Molly thank you so much for being here. Shilpa, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here and to share this topic. It's one that I'm super passionate about. And I think we share that in common that we're both um, kind of committed and dedicated to helping people figure out their purpose. 
absolutely in, in life yeah yeah just before we hit record I was sharing with you that I've always naturally enjoyed doing this and it sounds like you've been on this path for almost your entire career well almost almost I um I actually spent the first part of my career um in advertising and um, so I had that experience of something that I was good at, but not feeling fulfilled. And um, ironically, then that became my purpose is to help people figure out, you know, what are your natural gifts and talents and how can you find fulfillment and meaning at work? And um, it was sort of a happenstance way that I ended up making my career transition. Um, but boy, man, once you, once you get into that place where you really truly meant to be um it just makes such a difference in every aspect of your life and work just feels really different yes i can imagine that imagining what your life could be like is a little bit hard unless somebody on the other hand has gone through the uh the pain and then recognizing the pleasure of being fulfilled now the name of your company imagine coaching that's perfect <laughs> yes yeah yeah it was it was just like because i um I really resonate with um, Glennon Doyle has a really beautiful quote out there. And she talks about how rather than going to like what's like going to what's out there to look for what's next in our lives, that to go to our imagination, what can we imagine our best lives to look like? What is the potential that's sort of brewing inside of us? And imagination is really that gateway that helps inform us and gives us guidance on what's possible in our lives. And I think sometimes we can cut ourselves short by just, you know, thinking about that practical part. And so imagination is really powerful, especially when making changes and transition. And I also find that very spiritual in nature, because to imagine, if you, often when you sit in meditation, you imagine the state or the feeling or the condition yes as you make that transition and then it becomes a reality right yeah that's exactly right and and i think what you're pointing at is a lot of times this stuff is in us i'm going to just this you know these next steps of where we should be going are in us and um and by by getting quiet by listening to that inner guidance we can get some clarity and um, begin to trust because, um, you know, all of us are born with unique things to offer to the world. And um, rather than having the outside dictate in, we can start to, you know, be led and guided um, in, a, in a very spiritual way. Another facet of what I often focus on is mindset. And it sounds like you've also incorporated that perhaps for those who don't know or are aware of can you share a little bit about your involvement with and founding founding of Daring Venture? Oh yeah, absolutely. So, um, so just as you mentioned, um, I have Imagine Coaching, which I've had for about twenty five years, and then about nine years ago, I co founded another organization called the Daring Venture with um, Jenny Peterson, and we've since added a third partner, Holly O'Hanlon, and that business is really all about. Um, courage and it's based on the research of Brene Brown and we also integrate other positive psychology but it's really about building these courage building skills about how do you really want to live your life because um, being brave requires vulnerability and so they are two sides of the same coin and so when we want to start to be um, doing something different with our lives whether it's switching careers or asking for a promotion or dreaming bigger about what's possible um, it does really require that courage. So, so that's the foundation, um, you know, of the Daring Venture. We do a program called Dare to Lead, which is um, a 20-hour courage-building program based on the research of Dr. Brene Brown. And then um, we also integrate positive psychology and um, executive coaching so that people can really make changes. But it does start with this idea of, you know, it, it's not easy to really go for your dreams. It's not really easy to take those non-traditional paths. And it, it's vulnerable because we don't always know how it's going to work out. And yet it's, that's where the juice is. That's where the fulfillment is. And that's where we can really um, show up as our best selves in the world and make an impact and really make a difference. 
And I, I can truly resonate with this concept of vulnerability. There are uh, numerable instances through the day as I um, engage with my potential clients or even a podcast guest where at times you are vulnerable. Yeah. And yeah. Um, it, it's it's tough because it's it's a business, but by the same token, it's your heart. And yes. so it affects you on a different level as opposed to if you were, say, working for some corporation and you can stay somewhat detached. Right. Yeah. I think what you're saying is so powerful because it's easier to be um, put yourself out there when you don't have your own heart or skin in the game. But when you're making, um, when it's your business, when it's your career, when you're personally um, connected to the results, it feels, it feels really different. It feels, um, you know, much more vulnerable and much more courageous. And, and um, I think one of the things when we at the Daring Venture or part of Brene's work that we talk about is that every single act of courage, you know, anything, whether it's speaking up in a meeting or starting a business or, you know, defending our country is, is a vulnerable act. It, it is, um, you know, preceded by like, this does not feel good. This does not feel comfortable. This feels scary. I don't know how this is going to turn out. And so um, that is just the more that we can kind of get comfortable with being uncomfortable, you know, knowing that, that, that is part of the process. I think that really um, can change what we're willing to do and how we're willing to show up with each other. And when you say showing up with each other, what I have found that even when I am putting the lens on myself saying, oh my gosh, I can't believe, and then you fill in the blanks, you did this or you fumbled or whatever it is, then I allow more grace now with others because I recognize that they too are on their journey and whether they're aware or not, their vulnerability is part of their evolution. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think that's been a big piece of the work um, is just to really have compassion. We know that, um, you know, in those moments where you put yourself out there, it's, it is possible that you can have that feeling of less than show up, you know, I'm not enough in this situation. I'm, you know, who do, who do I think I am to do this? And the antidote to that is really, you know, self-compassion and then also empathy from others. And so we know that if we want to kind of raise the level of everybody being able to contribute that compassion and empathy for ourselves and others is really essential. Building that culture of support, building up others, helping them, you know, to not take um, those mistakes too seriously um, and, and, and give themselves grace. Give themselves grace. Absolutely. And that feeling of not being enough does that ever go away? <laughs> I don't think so, Shilpa. I don't think so. I think it's, you know, I think we get better at being re resilient to it, you know, but I also think it's, it's an intentional practice, right? Of practicing compassion, practicing grace, practicing, um, I'm going to get up and just try again and getting comfortable with like the fact that it might not always work out. No. Yeah. Even even during my podcast, when I invite certain guests, I find myself going, am I enough to even ask them to be on my show? Uh, I think that's such a normal, and thank you for saying that, because I think that just normalizes, because what you're doing is really brave. You know, you're putting yourself out there. You're, it's, it's that whole idea of, I don't have any guarantee of how this is going to go. I'm just going to show up and ask questions and see what happens, you know, and and that is really brave. And that is also vulnerability. And, you know, in any time, if we stay safe, if we stay under the radar, and we just kind of stay in that little box of your life, you're probably going to experience a lot less of that feeling of less than because you're not stretching yourself. And oh, so I had goosebumps when you said that. <laughs> yeah. So you're when when you're in a place where you're actually pursuing your dreams, you're going for what really feels good to you. It's going to require some risk probably. And, and then it's also going to require those feelings of maybe inadequacy, imposter syndrome. Am I enough in this? And, 
Um, so I think that's like just a great awareness for people to go, okay, this is just part of the process. I'm going to give myself grace in this. I'm doing something really brave and I'm not just staying under the radar. I'm not just staying in the box. I'm doing something that, that, you know, is meaningful. Yeah, just the other day, there was an incident and I had that self-talk where I was like, part of me was like, well, maybe if you just just get to learn how to stay under the radar, <laughs> but those oh. weren't my words, but I was like, like wow. I would not have been put in this situation and it was my self-induced situation, Yeah, but it was because I had to be brave and make a conversation with someone regarding the business and yeah. invite some guests it just didn't turn out and yeah. I I found myself going if I just stayed under the radar <laughs> it would have been but you know that going back to that same concept of am I enough another yeah. concept of that came up when I was going through my meditation training certification was something my my coach at the time would talk about and I thought oh I won't go through that which is imposter syndrome yeah. But now that I'm there, I am yeah. putting myself into course writing, workshops, yeah. and talking with people that I've never met face to face. That imposter syndrome comes up. And yeah. I would love for you to share a little bit about that because I know those who are pursuing their passion, mm -hmm. they may be experiencing it not even knowing that that right. is what imposter yeah. syndrome is. Yeah. Well, and I think when you, when everything that we're talking about, that imposter, imposter syndrome, feeling not enough, um, who do I think I am in this situation, that emotion that underpins all of that is shame that, you know, that based on the research from, from Dr. Brene Brown is that, is that, that it is, and it's a visceral feeling like, oh my gosh, what am I thinking? What am I doing? And, um, you know, one of the things to just be aware of is too, how do we handle, you know, when that shows up, how do we handle it? And she talks about the three ways. One is that we move toward and we hustle and we people please and we, you know, work harder and we try harder. And, you know, we might not set great boundaries for ourselves. And, and that's my go-to. And the second is we self-protect and we become like the smartest person in the room. We, um, you know, maybe kind of step back, don't engage, you know, distance ourselves. And then the third is sort of that um, I'm going to, you know, micromanage. I'm going to um, maybe be a little bit aggressive. I'm going to keep pushing. I'm going to, you know, that pushing kind of maybe a little bit of sarcasm. Um, so people handle it differently. We all do as human beings. We all do all three of those. And so noticing like when that feeling is coming up, oftentimes people tend to like really start hustling for their worth is it, especially common for women. Um, and so noticing like, am I doing this? What is my motivation underneath this? You know, am I hustling right now? Am I pleasing and appeasing? Or am I really standing in my power of not shrinking? Am I staying firm in who I am? My sacred size, you know, I rem I know um, one of the things when I first started doing this work is I had a mantra is just be yourself, be yourself, be yourself. And it's like, if it doesn't work, then it's okay. Just, just be yourself. And so, you know, just kind of going back to like, you know, just show up as you just show up as, um, you know, who you are. And if it's a little messy, that's okay. But I just, I guess those are the three that we know from the research that, um, tend to be the go-to home basis for people. And we usually tend to people please and appease people who have more power or that we're trying to impress. Um, and then, you know, come out swinging with the people that we love the most. So these are the natural states. And I just love Dr. Brene Brown's work because I truly resonate with so many of the nuances in this particular concept that we, as human beings, have these natural psychological or mental mindset patterns if you will yes so we go rely on these three maybe unconscious approaches right now yeah. that you know like what I often focus on for my training is bringing awareness bringing consciousness yeah. to our actions 
Yes. In this instance, if our tendency is to go through those three, it can can meditation or can the right mindset help you break those patterns? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. You know, so when you're when you're in that thick of it, you know, it is a physiological probably response in your body. And so having that mindfulness practice, having the breath, taking the pause. And just that idea, like I think you just said of that awareness, like, okay, now I'm aware of this. Oh, wow. This is what I'm doing in this moment. And maybe even being lighthearted about it to say, oh my gosh, here I am again. And then, you know, I think one of the most powerful things about mindfulness is it really just kind of helps us calm the water every day. And so that we're walking into the day with that calm, you know, not that, you know, turbulent um under in undercurrent and so that we can just show up and then notice things when we're when things are moving too fast that's oftentimes when we get more hooked into those patterns and so when we can slow everything down we're less likely to get hooked into those patterns because we can notice things and be aware absolutely and think of it as a this is perhaps not necessarily the best analogy, but there's a boat on a water and it it may have the momentum of going in a certain direction. Maybe it's going towards um, a waterfall. It's going down. And if you are not meditating, if you're not stepping back once in a while, it can be part of this momentum where you don't realize I'm not slowed down in days and I'm going down a river now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Such but, a great analogy. Right? But uh, yeah. you, you feel like the undercurrent is taking you and you're not even aware. Right. Right. I think that's the thing. Um, you know, we just had this conversation yesterday and we talked about how, you know, when you have emotions and you're offloading, one of the emotions that, or one of the ways that people offload hurt is numbing. And somebody said, can you numb all the feelings that you're feeling about being frustrated at work with working more? And it was like... <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, because you're now just in this current, right? And you're just letting that take you versus slowing down and going, wait a minute, what am I doing here? I'm not, am I not setting boundaries? Am I, what's my motivation behind all of this? You know, how can I do this differently? So, you know, to your point where you're not just being swept away, you're like being intentional. And the only thing one can control is truly themselves in the different situations. So what I have learned is that whether those three conditions or patterns that you've described are coming from your own behavior, yeah. conscious or unconscious, or it's coming from someone else, rather than getting swept away, if it's coming from someone else, yeah, perhaps that's where, not even perhaps, it's that is where the meditation mindset consciously intentionally and daily doing it helps because you may sit back and I I do this sometimes if like I mentioned there was this awkward incident and next thing I found myself is doing number one what you described is I'm going to prove myself I'm going to work 10 times harder I'm going to do fill in the blank so that when they are engaging with me I'm worthy yeah yeah thank you for sharing that that's a vulnerable share you know, I mean, I, and I think that is so, so common. Like that's what, you know, uh, that's my go-to too, is a please and appease and hustle a little bit more. Mm-hmm. And I think it's especially common for women. Um, and so it, it's just that catching yourself and then you can, in it without awareness, then you can't do, you can't do it differently. You, you know, you just keep going. So that's, a, I think that's a really powerful piece. And I think it kind of ties back to, you know, if we want to be living our purpose, if we want to be taking those risks to maybe do things different, to show up with our natural gifts and talents and to really make a difference in the world, um, you know, to your point, you're stretching yourself right now. You're stretching yourself, which requires um, stepping out in new directions. And so you are going to probably feel that occasionally. And so it's also like, being able to say, okay, this is just part of the process. This is, I'm going to feel this way. And I can just, you know, have some techniques and some tools, meditation, breath work, you know, self-talk, compassion, maybe talking to a friend of go-to strategies 
so that I can just reset and, and come back to my, you know, my, my calm place. Yes, even the mantra you mentioned that um, just be yourself. Yeah. That, yeah. That, it's, it's simple. I remember hearing that ever since I was in my early teens, you know, it, yeah. it may not always makes sense until you think about you are the only person you can control. Yeah. You can re- choose to remain grounded. And so what yeah. you described is helpful for that. The other aspect of passion and what is in the purpose part. Yeah. I'd like for us to kind of explore that just for a moment, because I, I hear some uh, common phrases that, well, we all have a purpose, or there's not just one purpose. I, I think this, when we say passion purposes, it means something a little more, I would say spiritual, it's, it's a big picture thinking. Yes. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I mean, I think that, you know, each of us are here, we're created, we're born with, you know, certain gifts and talents um, to, to, and, and, you know, one of the things that we talk about in the career world is that, you know, you have indicator lights of where your gifts and talents are. It's where you're going to experience flow when you're going to feel the best about yourself, when, you know, things are going to come, you know, they're still going to feel they're going to be it's still going to feel like work, but it's going to come so much easier. And you'll have that kind of that internal kind of signal light. Um, One of the signal lights is that time passes really quickly. Another signal light is that you don't feel self-conscious about yourself while you're doing it. You know, another signal light is that, you know, you, you feel that sense of accomplishment because you can feel a sense of accomplishment with something, um, but you don't feel good about what, while you're doing it. And so kind of paying attention to those inner um, signals of like, is this my flow? Is this my, my natural gifts and talents? And then, you know, I think that that purpose piece can change and ebb and flow over time. Um, But I feel like, you know, people can find meaningful work in terms of like doing something really creative or making a difference and helping people or, you know, building something, building a company. So I think that can ebb and flow, but, but what we do know is, you know, like you talked about, you know, going in and kind of getting that clarity from within of what is going to feel meaningful and purposeful and and that inner guidance is, is really important and powerful when making decisions about how do I want to use my gifts and talents in the world. And then we also know that if you combine, you know, those flow skills plus meaning and purpose, whatever that means for you that the research is that that's where you will achieve the highest levels of, um, you know, in terms of success or um, your best work, however you measure success or best work, you'll achieve at the highest levels. And then also in terms of a human being, that's where you self-actualize the most because you're combining what you're naturally meant to do with something that's bigger than yourself. And so it's, it's just a really powerful motivation because there's nothing that feels better at work than to do those two things together. And, yes. and, and you're making an impact in the world somehow, some way. And you think if everyone on this planet was doing that, just what a different world it would be. It would be a completely different world. We would all be, you know, it, and it doesn't just it's not even just about work. It's like that your emotions would be different. How you interact with people would be different. Um, Just there's so many pieces to it. I, I think like if we could just name one thing that, that could really impact the world, that would be one thing. And the word harmony comes to mind when you said that, because I can imagine that if we are all vibrating again, this goes back to the spirituality. Yeah. Right. But as I mentioned, the topic of passion and purpose is under the umbrella of energy awareness. And I I did that conscientiously knowing that we're energetic beings. If we're vibrating on a level where we are feeling like self-actualized, we're connecting to our higher self, we're working from our authentic voice, then imagine it's not just about the work part, the professional work part. It could be all aspects of how we arrive it could be like mm-hmm. on a Sunday me volunteering somewhere yes. or perhaps 
at helping a girlfriend work through something. It's, right. th that's all work, right? right? Yep. I love that. Yeah, that it doesn't have to be going to work. It can be, this is my work. And that can be a personal mission. Like this is what I want to be doing in my life right now. This is the impact I want to be making. And then that touches every realm of your life, whether it's volunteer or your family or your friends. And it, and it really becomes um, just integrated into who you are as a person. Right. And doesn't it feel that at that point, the passion purpose almost become like one? <laughs> yeah. 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 Like this is just who I am. It's not about what I do. It's who I am. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think it also just ties to, um, you know, like you said, that spiritual piece of we're all here to do something. We are created to do something. And, you know, our time here is, you know, whatever you believe, you know, short. And so to be able to leave a legacy and to leave the world a better place as a result of, of your presence here on, on earth, I think is pretty powerful. Absolutely. One of my favorite um, mantras in the last few months has been, I'm a creator. Mm. And I do a lot of journaling around just that notion of, I'm a creator. When you really reflect on it, realize that that holds true for various aspects of life. In fact, everything. I could yeah. be in the kitchen cooking a nice meal. And I'm a creator. Yeah, yeah. Or you could be in the garden, or you could be, you know, um, brainstorming ideas you're creating right now. You're you're playing off of the things that I'm saying, and then you're saying something else that's creative. Yeah. It's not scripted. It's it's in the moment creativity. Yeah. yeah, I love that. That's really, and, and that we're all um, capable of creating something new in our lives so that we don't have to stay stuck. No. And that's one of the things, the, one of the pain points that I often sense, I've gone through it, I've sensed it in other women, is that the feeling of being stuck yeah. is one of the major pain points or unfulfilled or overwhelmed. Yes. And yes, the stuckness, um, it can truly affect you on a physiological level mm -hmm. that starts showing up on our, in our tissues and in our body. Right. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And energetically, like you've talked about, you know, your yeah. energy level isn't as good. Your mood isn't as good. You know, you're, you're wrestling. There's a lot of mental gymnastics that might be going on when you're stuck. Yeah. And, um, and, you know, it is interesting that um, oftentimes there's some kind of, you know, there's like that, that um, Bridges has this model of transition. And oftentimes people are in that plateau there, they're kind of stuck. And there's some comfort there. And you don't want to give up that comfort and that security. And I know what to expect. But then usually there's, there's some kind of event that happens. And it can be either an external or an internal event. And something, sometimes it has nothing to do with, you know, it could just be the last straw or a comment somebody makes, or it could be a birthday. It could be a kid graduates from, you know, whatever grade. And, and when people get into that next phase, it's super messy and creative, but anything becomes possible. Like things they would never have imagined when they were in that plateau become possible. Like, and, and it's kind of a cool, um, you know, chaotic in some ways, place of life, but then what can emerge from that is like a brand new life, a brand new kind of cycle of who I'm supposed to be as a person and kind of moving up to that next rung um, in terms of like a, that spiral. So I'm not just staying stuck anymore and I'm not just going to keep going around the same spiral. I'm going to actually evolve. Yeah, the word evolve is spot on what I was thinking, the way you just articulated that entire process and allowing again, the grace for whether it's yourself or others. Yeah. I recently um, saw something on Facebook. If a lot of my friends are in the same space and yeah. one, he just made some comment, like, I feel like I, I'm making an, a state of evolution. I'm, I'm shifting. And I've seen that about myself and another meditation friends chimed in. She said, I am as well. I'm like, mm. oh, we go through, I, maybe there is rhythms. And when we're stuck, yeah. we feel so much shame. I can say for myself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, and I, and, and I think we can't be evolving all the time. So being, I mean, I think when you're stuck, you're still trying things. Yeah. You're still like working through things. You know, I don't think, you know, when people are stuck, they're still doing things to try to get unstuck. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, you know, and sometimes it's a slow process and sometimes it's a big, you know, big, like, okay, the floodgate just opened. But I think there's that precipice of, am I going to make, here's, here's one of the quotes from Brene that I think is super powerful. The cave I fear to enter holds the treasure that I seek. And I think when people are stuck, they know that cave, like, do not make me go there. I know that would help me. I know that would get me there, but that just feels too darn scary. That feels too risky. You know, like they, you know, that if you can name that cave, then that's starting to get you unstuck. Like you can go, okay, I know that cave. I don't want to go there, but I will, you know, like then you can, if you can start to think about if I can go to that cave and that's going to give me the treasure. Um, it, but there's a, there's a, a, there's a risk factor there. There's a leap of faith that has to happen and kind of a trust factor of, and that's, I think where the spirituality comes in is like, I have to let go and know that maybe God is in charge here and I am not, it's, I can't do this by myself. Allowing that surrender and reminding ourselves that we don't have to be doing it all. I just heard that just yesterday that yeah. in fact, if we really are humble about it, we're not doing a lot. We're not doing any of it. <laughs> we're doing the footwork and that's about it. Yeah. And just yeah. To be, again, step back, allow grace. Yeah. yeah. This, this is something that I feel like is your gift, Molly. And there is an entire generation of women now that'll be, be benefiting from this. I can mm -hmm. speak for myself that it's been a painful, long journey. Yeah. I'm here. And I had to yeah. come to this place of, oh, I, I, I personally want to be a coach. I want to help others. Yeah. And I know I have this gift, but unlike where you and I potentially might be recognizing that in others, helping them lift up, I didn't always have anybody there. Yeah. Yeah. That makes a difference when you're not, you know, because we know when you're supported, everything just feels easier. Even if it's not easier, it feels easier. Yeah. And so you have more energy and you have more, you know, confidence to move forward. And when you have that social support. And what excites me is that as a mother, and I'm an older mother, I work with my husband a lot to do the right things for our son. He's 10. And yeah. things that we feel like we may not have had, like a mentor. Nice. So we try to surround him with mentorships and friendships where others are there to uplift him and nice. also just exposing him to so many things so that he's he's multidimensional because that's one of the things I believe a lot of us can relate to is you're not something that needs to be put in a box with a label. Right. Right. I completely agree. That's so cool that you're doing that for your son. Yeah. You know, you're shaping them. I mean, and, and that kind of goes to your earlier comment is you're not just doing this as your business. You're doing this as who you are. I'm shaping him. I'm exposing him. I'm helping him grow as a person. I'm coaching him, you know, and so that's, that's beautiful. That's awesome. Like, you know, there, there should be some kind of a program around that. <laughs> How do there, you? <laughs> there should. Well, and what I was thinking was just for yourself, because you've been in this space for so long, and you mentioned Daring Venture, at least a nine-year, 10-year journey in that space, yes. your life work, whether it's personal or professional, is all kind of one space in some regards, but in a yes. good way. You know, sometimes yeah. you hear people say there's no, um, they have to cut off their professional from personal, but I feel comfortable saying that now I don't need to do that because I'm enjoying both. Right. Yeah. Well, it does, and it doesn't feel like work. It feels good. It just feels like this is what I want to do in the world. Yeah. So it does make a difference. Um, it, it, and it, and it kind of goes to that essence of this is who I am and this is what fills me up. And so why would I not just do more of it? Right, right. Yeah. So, yeah, this is, this is this lovely. Is, 
Now to wrap up for those who are um, perhaps two, two age groups. One is I would say they're somewhere between their late twenties to late thirties. Yep. And, and those who are maybe late thirties to beyond. And perhaps they might be doing what I've called my second act. What kind of um, advice would you give for those two segments? Yeah. So, you know, I think, I think the idea of, you know, first of all, really figuring out what, where do I, where do I feel the best about myself? What are those natural gifts and talents? And then honoring that, because I know when I was, you know, in the early part of my career, I knew that I, that, that, that it wasn't a good fit, but I didn't honor it right away. And so I think honoring, putting that ahead of like the security or making money or what you should be doing. I think that's a, a big piece that holds people back. And, and so taking those risks earlier on, I think is in some ways easier because you don't have maybe a family or a mortgage and all of that. So I would say for those younger people, take those risks earlier to figure out where, where your natural gifts and talents are. And it's just never too late to take those leaps of faith, even no matter what age you are, because um, it, it feels really scary and it feels really uncertain. But on the other side of it, it's just so rewarding and so um, much a better way to live your life. And, and um, you know, trusting that it will work out, you know, that we're, that you will be supported and that you will, um, you know, f- find a place to land that, that meets your gifts and talents and, and allows you to use your purpose in the world. And it does require a leap of faith and overcoming what might be fear. It could be fear of, cultural judgment it could be fear of like I came from a very orthodox Indian valley where what was expected of me and what I wanted to do was going against the grain yeah yes I think that's a a big piece is am I doing this to you know because this is expected of me and this is what my you know family this is just sort of like what you're supposed to do and so, you know, I think to your point, that meditation can be really powerful in prayer, whatever that is for you of going in and, and really listening to what's inside of you and what, you know, um, where you're being led and guided to do. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, Molly, uh, if someone would like to work with you, I, I will place the details in the show notes, but would you like to share anything about that as well? Yeah. So if people are interested in that career purpose piece, um, my website is um, imaginecoaching.com and I have um, a free, um, uh, it's it's a little workbook that you can get to kind of get started too. So that's, that's available. And I also do um, chemistry check sessions. So people can sign up for that. Just get on the website and when you meet for 30 minutes, you kind of share your story. I can share how I work with you and and that's a great way to just to see if coaching is right for you. Um, and then, um, and through the, the Daring Venture, we have a program called Dare to Lead. We have cohorts that run. Um, we have one that's actually starting next week, but then we also have one starting in the fall. So that's a 10 week virtual program that's super powerful, does really a lot of this leadership from the inside out concepts from Brene Brown that um, are truly transformative. So those would be my two two calls to action that is awesome yeah. and i would love to have you back in the future i'm sure there's a topic where we can go deeper yeah thank you Shilpa. but this was lovely and it was so lovely to hear your story too and for you to share some bits and pieces that were pretty courageous about um the things that you've had to overcome and to get to thank where you. you are and continue to do that so, i really appreciate all yeah. of this Thank you so much. Thanks for tuning in, sweet soul. If you've enjoyed this episode, I would be so grateful for your kind review on Apple Podcast. Simply click on the link in the show notes to leave your lovely feedback and uplift our spirits. Your support means the world to me and helps our show thrive. So please show me your love and continue to practice Omni Mindfulness.